Welcome. Let's work through a standard costing example and compute the variances. Uh, the difference in this problem is that we're going to see that the quantity of materials purchased is not equal to the quantity of materials used. The Ranger Company planned to produce 13,000 baseballs during November, but it actually produced 12,000 baseballs. So don't forget, we're going to use a flexible budgeting concept, so what's relevant here is that we actually produced 12,000 baseballs. Material purchases amounted to 50,000 pounds at 48 cents per pound. Materials usage amounted to 46,000 pounds. The baseballs required 23,000 hours of labor, costing $296,700. Variable overhead cost incurred during the period totaled $95,450. The company has established the following material and labor standards for one baseball. So on this screen we've seen what actually did happen, and now we'll see what they had estimated would happen based on their standard. Direct material, four pounds of material, or two dollars per unit. Direct labor, two hours at twelve dollars per hour, or twenty-four dollars per unit. Variable overhead, two hours at $4 per hour, or $8 per unit. So clearly they apply overhead based on direct labor hours. Compute the direct materials usage or quantity variance. So the formula we've seen for that computation is that in parentheses we'll take standard quantity allowed minus actual quantity used, and we'll multiply by the standard price per pound. The standard quantity, we'll have to compute that in total. We know that per unit, the standard is 4 pounds. We know that we actually produced 12,000 units, noting that we did not use planned production, but actual production here. That says we should have used 48,000 pounds of material. So 48,000 pounds standard quantity minus 46,000 pounds actually used. So when you look at this, you can see that we were supposed to use 48,000 pounds to make 12,000 units, and we did use 46,000 pounds to make 12,000 units. We need to convert this to a dollar amount, so we'll multiply by the standard price per pound, but when we go back and look at the information, you can see that they did not give us a standard price per pound. The standard cost per unit is $2, so the price we paid can be computed by taking that $2 divided by the 4 pounds, and we get 50 cents per pound. All right, so the standard allows for 50 cents per pound purchase price. We'll put that back into our formula. A 2,000 pound difference times 50 cents gives us a $1,000 variance, and this will be favorable because we used less materials than allowed, which saves money. So we have a $1,000 favorable direct material usage variance. Compute the direct materials price variance. A reminder of the formula, standard price per pound minus actual price per pound. So in parentheses, you isolate the difference in price paid. Then you multiply by the actual quantity purchased. We computed our standard price per pound to be 50 cents. We should have paid 50 cents for every pound purchased. We did pay 48 cents per pound. That's given in the paragraph. And we purchased 50,000 pounds. Again, notice that we used quantity purchased 50,000 rather than quantity used of 46,000. This will give us a $1,000 variance, and this is favorable. We paid less than the standard allowed. So our direct material usage variance is 1,000 favorable, and our direct material price variance is also $1,000 favorable. Compute the total direct labor variance. One way to get this answer is to compute both the rate and the efficiency variance for labor.
Our formula, in parentheses, we isolate the difference in pay rate, standard rate per hour minus actual rate per hour, times actual quantity of direct labor hours. So given in the problem, we were supposed to pay $12 per hour. We did pay $296,700 for 23,000 hours. So we're going to have to compute the actual labor rate paid. We can do that by taking the total labor cost, $296,700, and divide by the 23,000 hours. Based on this, we can see that we actually paid $12.90 per hour. We'll put that into our rate variance equation. You can see we paid an extra 90 cents for all 23,000 hours worked. 90 cents times 23,000 hours, you get $20,700 as the variance. And this one is unfavorable we paid more than the standard allowed. Next, we'll compute the direct labor efficiency variance. That formula, standard quantity of labor hours minus actual quantity of labor hours. Then we'll multiply by the standard direct labor rate per hour. Our standard quantity allowed, we know per unit it's two hours. We need to get that number in total. So we'll take our two hours per unit. We'll multiply by 12,000 units produced. Now we know we should have used 24,000 hours. So putting it into our efficiency variance formula, 24,000 hours standard minus 23,000 hours used times the standard rate of $12 per hour. So you'll get a $12,000 variance. And this one is favorable. Now we can put our two variances together to get the total direct labor variance. So to summarize our calculations, the direct labor rate variance is $20,700 unfavorable. The efficiency variance was computed to be $12,000 favorable. So to get the net total direct labor variance, when you have one unfavorable and one favorable variance, you will net them out and you'll see that the total labor variance is $8,700 and it is unfavorable since that's the larger variance of the two. Now what this total direct labor variance tells us is that during this period, the company paid $8,700 too much for labor, since it's an unfavorable variance. Interpret the labor variances and indicate any interrelationships that might exist between the two the variances computed. When you're looking at interrelationships, you want to focus on whether an unfavorable variance could have caused a favorable variance or vice versa, if a favorable variance may have caused an unfavorable variance. So when we look at possible interrelationships, if we start by looking at the direct labor rate variance and see that it was unfavorable, we paid $12.90 per hour, we were allowed to pay $12 per hour. So we had an unfavorable rate variance. This may indicate that workers were more skilled, which may mean they were more efficient. Now the key word here is may. This would be up to management to investigate. But this shows you that we're going to have direct responsibility for variances, like the efficiency variance would be the responsibility of the production manager. But management would want to look into the fact that this higher wage rate may have caused labor to be more efficient.
compute the variable overhead spending variance. Sometimes this is called the variable overhead rate variance. They mean the same thing, spending and rate. You're trying to identify, did we spend the right amount on our variable overhead costs, such as indirect materials, factory electricity, those variable costs of production. Our formula, standard variable overhead rate per hour minus actual variable overhead rate per hour times the actual quantity of direct labor hours. Now recall that this only works when overhead is applied based on labor hours. We know our standard variable overhead rate, that was given. We're going to have to compute this actual variable overhead rate per hour. And what we know about overhead is that $95,450 was actually incurred. And we know that 23,000 labor hours were actually worked. So variable overhead costs were incurred at a rate of $4.15 per labor hour. Now going back to what's given, we know that the standard rate was $4 per hour. We've computed the actual rate to be $4.15, so we can see we paid $0.15 cents too much per hour for our variable overhead costs. We'll then multiply by the actual hours worked, and you get a variance of $3,450. And this is unfavorable. We spent more than we were supposed to according to the standard on these costs. Compute the variable overhead efficiency variance. Now here we're trying to identify if variable overhead costs were more or less than standard because more or less labor hours were worked. Remember when overhead is incurred because of labor hours, that's going to also affect the variable overhead cost in addition to that labor cost. Our formula in parentheses will isolate the difference in labor hours, standard quantity minus actual quantity, and will mul multiply by our standard variable overhead rate per hour. All right, this is going to look a lot like that direct labor efficiency variance. We're going to figure out that we were supposed to work two hours per unit. We produced 12,000 units. So our standard quantity of hours is 24,000. We were allowed to work 24,000 hours. We did work 23,000 hours. So this is going to affect not just the labor cost, but also the variable overhead cost incurred. It'll affect the electricity, the variable part of maintenance, the supplies used. And so we're going to multiply by our standard rate per hour of $4. That's our variable overhead rate. And we get a $4,000 variance. This one will be favorable. So that's it for this problem. And what you've seen here is just what, how do we handle it when we purchase one quantity of materials and use another quantity? And then the other variances that would be review of what we've done in prior problems. So work some problems and bring your questions to class. I look forward to seeing you then.